Now the table is always hot with current events and social issues, but sometimes the heat can get a little intense. Let's turn the temperature down, take a breather, and get into this week's topic, cool down. So for this week, I wanted to know, Quavi Andre, mm -hmm. what is something that you find unexpectedly attractive? I am so glad you brought this question up because recently I have had a whole adult moment. As a kid, there was so many things that I thought was hot. Like, you know, ooh, they have the six pack abs and the da 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 da. They're like, you know, funny and they're, you know, charismatic and all these other, you know, these kind of surface level things. And then as an adult, I was recently talking to this one um, guy and, you know, I realized that like, there are other things that I think are more attractive than just the surface stuff. Like for me specifically, a level of support is necessary in a relationship mm -hmm. for me. And it's um, the specific person I'm talking about. We were talking for a second and like I had told them, I was like, hey, by the way, you know, I, they were like, well, what do you do? And I'm like, well, I, my, my job is this, but my career and my passion is, you know, I have a talk show called The Melon Margin. I have my own YouTube channel. I write, stuff like that. And they were like, oh, okay. And then like never spoke about it again. Never yep. talked about my videos, never said, you know, whatever. And I was like, for me, I was like, that's necessary. I didn't realize until that time where I was like, you not asking me about what I'm doing. You not saying, hey, babe, I subscribe to your channel. I can't wait to see what you do next. Or, hey, baby, you haven't made a video in a while. What's going on? Are you okay? What's going on here? Or, hey, I watched this Melon, I watched Melon Margin last week and I thought it was so entertaining. That was such a great conversation you had. You know, stuff like that is, that's, that's hot. That's hot to right. me. Like that kind of support from someone and that kind of thing, I didn't realize it was something that I wanted. So that to me is was one, one of the things that I thought was like, I didn't think that was, that was something that was going to be attractive to me until I didn't have it. Mm. You that's, know? That's so interesting. And I, I agree. I think that, you know, that's one of the things that you don't necessarily know you want until you don't have it or you <laughs> had it and you lost it. Yeah. Um, but I think for me, something that I didn't really expect to be super attractive that I'm now just like is so attractive to me is men in makeup. I think that it's one of those things where, uh, you know, I'm going to be honest, this question was inspired by your TikTok when you were talking about how like in the <laughs> community, you know, we have this thing of like femmes aren't supposed to be attracted to femmes. And I, yeah. you know, for a while I had this thing like, oh, you know, I'm starting to get into makeup, like, and I see somebody else doing makeup and I'm like, oh, we can't be compatible because like, we're not. But yeah. I think that that's why it was so unexpected. But then I really thought about it and I really like deconstructed those thoughts. And I was like, there is something about, you know, that combination of just like masculine and feminine energy that comes with it. Not saying that like makeup has a gender because makeup has no gender, but yeah. there is just like this way of expressing yourself with makeup that is feminine. And I think that that balance between masculinity and femininity is something that's so attractive in somebody who's can do it well. And I also think that as somebody who experience, experiments with makeup, I've realized that like, people who wear makeup are bad bitches. People yeah. who makeup will not make you a bad bitch, but awaken that Ele inner elevates, bitch. Elevates, yeah. And elevate it. Because like, I know when I put on a beat and I'm really feeling it, I'll just like look at myself in the camera, I'll start posing, you know, <laughs> get the light hitting the highlighter yeah. real quick. Yeah. And it just like creates this confidence in me that like was in me, but just like needed something to bring it out. And I think that especially now when, you know, being a man who wears makeup is so stigmatized or even yeah. women who wear makeup are also stigmatized. But like in general, like having that confidence to do something against stigma, that's sexy. Oh, yes. And I think I think there's like confidence, but also I think there's something because I think that we're talking about is confidence in it, too. Like that, that like mm -hmm. I know who I am and I'm going to do who I am, that kind of thing. Right. But I also think for me, another thing that I thought I didn't expect to be like really attractive until, again, this partner, the, this you know situation I had and I realized they didn't have that. And I was like, oh, that's something I need, because for me, passion is sexy and not necessarily sexual passion, but like someone who is passionate about something. It is just 
it gets me going. And I didn't realize that until I was talking with this person and they were like, well, I don't really know what I want to do. And I'm just kind of like going through the motions in life or whatever. And I was kind of like, this is not hot. Like, that's not sexy. Mm. And it's like, I didn't realize why. I was like, what the, what the fuck? Like, what is the problem here? Like, well, I mean, because they were really funny, really nice. But I was like, that just, it just turned me off. I was like, what do you, you know, like, and I think it's because I know how excited I get when I talk about writing. When I talk about, you know, when I do this show, when I do my own talk show, when I do my own uh, YouTube channel, like it just, it feels so good. And like, you want to see that. And it's, I think it's the passion and ambition. And it's like, mm -hmm. even if you are working at McDonald's, but you're like, listen, babe, I'm working at McDonald's, but eventually I'm going to own my own McDonald's. I'm working towards owning my own. I'm going to become the general manager, then originally the regional manager. And I'm, I'm making efforts to do those things. Like not just saying like, it doesn't matter what you're doing, but it's like someone who's like, listen, this is what I'm doing right here. Yeah, I want to be a rapper, but I still go to work every day to get my coin because I know I got to get my bag this way. But I also, when I come home, I go to work. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like that shit, ooh, like that, just like seeing somebody who's like not just going, not just somebody who's going like, oh, I'm just going to go by the motions or, oh, I'm, I want to rap, but I also, you know, I just, um, I want to rap, but I'm just, I'm just doing it on the side and I'm, I'm doing it, whatever. Like seeing someone who's like, listen, I know I'm going to get my bag and I'm going to fight for it. And yes, I got to work this regular job right now, but I'm going to work this fucking job, but I'm going to bust my ass every other day to get what I need to get to in my career. That kind of stuff to me, somewhat seeing someone that ambitious, that passionate about something, because to me, I think for me, the reason why I need that in a relationship is because when there are days, especially in a creative career where you falter where you need a person, uh, kind of an accountability buddy, kind of sort of, where it's like, yeah. what are you doing? And you're like, well, I'm just having a rough day. It's like, okay, you can have a rough day. I'll let you have that. Tomorrow, I get back on your shit. You know what I'm saying? Like somebody's right. gonna check it out. Like, like, <laughs> okay, you're right, hold on. Like, you know what I mean? And it's like, because I think that in life, you know, you, you need that You need that kind of, you need someone who's gonna be like, I always say like, I want a partner who's like gasoline and I'm fired. We're gonna keep building each other up. And so it's like on the days where you're lacking or you are, you're like just having one of your dark days, like, I don't know what's going to happen. I'm like, hold on, baby. Okay, I understand. Let's go through those emotions because those are absolutely valid. But I need you to get your ass up tomorrow and get it back on your shit. This is what you're supposed to be doing. Right. You know what I'm saying? And the same thing for me. And so I need, because I because that kind of support, that kind of ambition, it's just sexy. You know, it's, it's just, and having that person who's going to keep you, who's going to keep checking you and say, hey, listen, what you doing? You got to, you got, you got to, you got to get up on bestseller author. What are you doing? You gotta become a. You gotta get this talk show together. What you doing, sis? You know what I mean? What do you right. think, Daquan? Like, do you think I, that's kind of? I, I agree. I think that, <laughs> like, I am a Capricorn through and through. Like, Capricorns <laughs> are ambitious, and so I need somebody who's going to match my energy because, like, at the end of the day, like, I'm going to be moving and grooving and moving on to the next thing and like trying to work myself to where I want to go. And yeah. if you're just like stuck somewhere and you're okay with that and you're complacent. That's not going to help me or even just like thinking like logistically about a relationship. Like if I'm super busy trying to grind to make it to where I want to be in life in in my like creative interests, like I need somebody else who's also grinding and also has like their own life so that, you know, they're not just like codependent on me and always yeah. like trying to tag along with me when it's like, you know, I love you, but I got to do what I got to do. And like, I'm not always going to have that super amount of time to just like stay in one place. Like I need somebody who's moving and grooving just like I do. Exactly. It's, it's a relationship, which means you're supposed to be building each other up, not tearing each other down. And I think that in a degree, in a way, unfortunately, dating someone who is not that ambitious, dating someone who is not as passionate as you may be, y'all are in two different places in your life and that's not going to work. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I think that that's where it comes to understanding like this, you need to under, you need to be with someone who's on the same track as you. And so that way y'all are building each other up. Y'all both have goals, ambitions, dreams. Y'all match the um, energy. Exactly. Your destinations, your paths align, even if they're not in the same direction. Even if I'm trying to be an actor, writer, dancer, whatever, or whatever, whatever, wherever I'm trying to be, and you're trying to be something in a more practical field, like a doctor, or whatever the case it be, even if I have a completely different, even if let's say for me, I'm a writer and my and my boyfriend is a um uh, uh trying to be a doctor. We're that's still passion. And it's like, listen, baby, what you doing? You gotta study. You gotta study tonight. You gotta test tomorrow. Let me get you together. Like, right. let me quiz you real quick. Or me, or like I said, when I'm having my ba my days, hey babe, what you doing? Oh, uh, you you shouldn't be writing right now. Shouldn't you be writing? What you doing right here? You, you feeling you that? that? Audition coming up. Let's run some yeah, lines. Yeah. <laughs> Let's run some lines. 
So I think that there's just a, fl a fluidity that has to go on in a relationship. And I think that there's something to be said about that. And I think that that's, that's sexy. That's a sexy. So um, shifting gears here, um, so many children grow up never knowing the full scope of what their culture has contributed to society and history. So it's time for change. Let's take a pause, rewind, and remind the world just how <laughs> we did that. Now, in the article, 26 Black Americans You Don't Know But Should, we learn about Rose Marie McCoy. Now, McCoy's name may not be instantly recognizable, but she wrote and produced some of the biggest pop songs in the 1950s. Now, in an industry dominated by white males, McCoy was able to make her mark through her pen, even though she couldn't through her own voice. Her songs, after all, and Gavin Blues never quite took off on the charts, but she was always courted by music labels to write for other artists, including hit singles for Big May Bell, Elvis Presley, and Big Joe Turner, to name a few. So now, when you hear Presley's trying to get you, you'll remember the name of the African-American woman who wrote it. Mm. And that's on period. <laughs> period. <laughs> Black women. Feel, in the music industry, anytime there is super white success, there's some blackness behind it. You just don't know about it. <laughs> well, that's a conversation for another, another day. day. <laughs> so for my We Did That, I want to highlight Edith Spurlock Sampson, who was one of seven children born to a middle-class family in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. After being encouraged to become a lawyer while attending NYU School of Social Work, she studied law at the John Marshall Law School and graduated with a law degree. She then went on to Loyola University Law School in Chicago, where she became the first woman to earn a Master of Law degree. Sampson then founded her own practice in 1934 and was one of the first women to argue in front of the U.S. Supreme Court. Sampson became the first African American to be appointed to the to a permanent U.S. delegation to the United Nations in 1950. Sampson went on multiple worldwide lecture tours while working at the UN and was a member of the U.S. delegation to the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, also known as NATO. Sampson was elected to the Chicago Municipal Court as a judge in 1962 at the age of 61. Mm. With that election, she became the first Black woman elected to the bench in the United States by popular vote. <laughs> Black women constantly raising the bar and doing it flawlessly. Period. Period. <laughs> now, as always, thank you all so much for watching and please keep the conversation going down in the comment box down below. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. And if you're listening to us on our podcast, please rate and review on whatever platform you're using. Now, if you want to follow us on social media, our handles are at Andre Talks A Lot and at Daquan950. You can also follow our podcast on Instagram at The Melanin Margin for updates of new content. Now, we'll see you all next week on the Melanin Margin, where conversations about race ah, ah, are never off the table. Goodbye now.